Hey everyone, this video will be on the introduction to alcohols. Alcohols are organic compounds that have a oxygen, hydrogen, or otherwise known as hydroxyl or hydroxy functional group attached to a carbon atom. And this is indicated in this molecule of alcohol here. Structurally speaking, there are three types of alcohols, primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, and tertiary alcohols. Primary alcohols is when the carbon atom that has the hydroxyl group is connected to two hydrogen atoms and one other carbon atom. And this is usually denoted by the letter R in organic chemistry because this carbon atom could be further attached to more carbon atoms. This is what we typically refer to as an alkyl group which means one or multiple carbon atoms. Secondary alcohol is when the carbon atom that has the hydroxyl functional group is connected to two alkyl groups, so two carbon atoms, and one other hydrogen atom. Tertiary alcohol, finally, is when the carbon atom is connected to three adjacent alkyl or carbon atoms. So primary alcohol, there's one alkyl group. Secondary alcohol, there's two alkyl groups and tertiary alcohol is when there are three alcohol groups. It is very important for you to understand and learn how to recognize these three different types of alcohols based on their chemical structure. The general molecular formula of alcohols is CnH2n plus 2O. This is when there is only one alcohol group attached. When that's the case, the number of hydrogen atoms in the alcohol is twice the number of carbons plus two. So very similar to an alkane molecule, just with the additional oxygen attached. The naming of alcohols follows all the rules that we've discussed already in another video. The only difference is that to denote the presence of an alcohol functional group, we need to add the suffix of O, O-L. So in the case of an alcohol with one carbon atom in its longest chain, this will be called methanol, where there's two carbon atoms, ethanol, and in the case where there's three carbon atoms, this will be propanol. And in the propanol molecule, since the hydroxyl or alcohol functional group can be either bonded to the first carbon atom or the second carbon atom, this is specifically called one propanol. So make sure to indicate the position of the alcohol group when necessary. In the organic chemistry nomenclature, Alcohols are given higher priority than hydrocarbons. These are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Thus, when we are indicating the position of the alcohol functional group, it is given the lowest number possible. Let's look at a few examples. In this molecule of an alcohol, there's also an alkene double bond between the two carbon atoms. So we can either number the carbon atom this way, one, two, Three, four, where we give the double bond a number of two and the alcohol a number of four, we can also number the other way around. One, two, three, four. This time around, you can see the alcohol functional group is given a lower number. This is why when we are counting the carbon chain for this molecule, we count it from the right to the left. In the example on the right-hand side, we have a cyclic compound. Usually, the cyclic compound will give the lowest number possible to the alkene double bond, but in this case, we must give higher priority to the alcohol functional group. Thus, the number one carbon is the one that has the alcohol. Furthermore, we then count the six-membered ring in a clockwise manner, such that the double bond receives a lower number of two. This means the name of this compound is 2-cyclohexene-1O. Let's talk about the physical properties of alcohols. Aqueous solubility, as we discussed, is determined by the intermolecular forces between the solutes, in this case the alcohol, and water. Remember that water is a polar solvent, and thus it can only dissolve polar solutes. The difference between hydrocarbons and alcohol is that the presence of this hydroxyl group makes alcohols more polar, as the oxygen atom is electronegative. This means the hydroxyl group is the polar region of the alcohol molecule, while the rest of the molecule, consisting of mostly carbon and hydrogen atoms, 
are considered as nonpolar. The polar nature of alcohols allows them to form dipole dipole forces as well as hydrogen bonds with water. The latter, that is a hydrogen bond, is more significant as it, it is stronger. Alcohols can form hydrogen bonds because they contain a hydrogen atom that's bound to an oxygen. In general, we consider alcohol compounds to be soluble in water and definitely more soluble than the nonpolar hydrocarbon molecules. It is important to note that although alcohols are considered as polar molecules, they will become more nonpolar with increasing number of carbon atoms. Therefore, alcohol solubility in water decreases as they get larger or with increasing number of carbon atoms. Butanol, an alcohol with roughly four carbon atoms, is generally considered as the turning point between the soluble alcohols, such as methanol, and the rather insoluble alcohols, such as octanol. Melting point and boiling point are determined by the strength of intermolecular forces between molecules. In alcohols, these are dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. Again, it is very important for you to understand why alcohols can form hydrogen bonds as they contain hydrogen atoms that's connected to an oxygen. In this diagram here, the blue dashed lines illustrate two hydrogen bonds that are being formed between two adjacent ethanol molecules. Due to the fact that alcohols can form more than just dispersion forces, they have higher melting point and boiling point than hydrocarbons. Again, similar to hydrocarbons, the strength of dispersion forces between alcohol molecules increases with the molecular mass. Thus, as the size of the alcohol increases, the magnitude or the strength of the dispersion forces also increases. This means that larger alcohols, again, have a higher boiling point and melting point.